on to the next question. El Torpedo on YouTube. You have told us how to detect diacetyl, but what do you do if it is in your beer? There was a video that I did where I talked about, and I don't know, it might be a standalone video on diacetyl test, or maybe it was it was part of another series. Um, I, I'm not really sure. The last year of creating videos has been a bit of a blur. Yeah, I talked about how to do a diacetyl test of of, of essentially um, taking a you know a finished beer, a beer that's hit terminal, uh, is reading at terminal gravity for for two days straight. And then taking a sample of that into a sealed container that can handle some heat. And I do a water bath, a hot water bath with that. I will take water off of the hot liquor tank and I will slowly bleed it into a container. I use a Nalgene bottle, like a water bottle. Um, and I'll fill that up halfway with beer. And then I'll sit it in another container. I'll run that hot water in there. And I give it. I don't know, it's like 20, 30 minutes. Um, I could look up the the exact thing. But uh, after that period of time, it's important that the that the vessel can seal. You can open it and then like waft over it. And the if there is diacetyl present in the beer, the heating the beer will, will help to make that aroma of diacetyl or like movie theater butter, butterscotch, it'll make it more obvious, right? So you'll know that it's not time to crash that beer yet. When we get into the question of, you told us how to detect diacetyl, but what do you do if you have it in your beer? Hopefully it's at that point where it's still in the fermenter and you have the ability to either let that beer continue to condition a little bit and clean up, get, give that yeast a chance to clean up after itself. Potentially, you can warm that fermenter, um, whether it be turn the, the glycol jacket up, or if it's a homebrew fermenter, heat that up, move it to a warmer room, or change the temperature control around it and let that warm up. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to give a, a warmer environment to the yeast that might help keep them perked perked up a little bit and, and and still willing to kind of clean up the, the the mess they left because that diacetyl is is especially in in certain yeast strains is is part of something that is produced during fermentation and if you do not have enough happy healthy yeast cells in there um, they don't have the oomph or the numbers to clean up after themselves so it can be a yeast health thing a low yeast pitch pitching rate thing, things like that. It can also be related to infection. But if you do have diacetyl, you can try to warm that vessel up. If your fermenter is small enough, you know, I know sometimes people say, you know, maybe try to rouse it a little bit. Um, I'm not super crazy about that because I don't like pushing up all the yeast that's kind of died and settled down at the bottom of a carboy or a bucket. I don't want that back up in solution. But yeah, really kind of warming. And then uh, another very German way would be to add maybe like uh, 10% by volume another beer that is at uh, active, is an active fermentation. Like full Kreuzen, uh, it's ripping, it's ready to go. You can add 10% of that beer into uh, something like that. And then that may help having active yeast up and doing its thing may help to may help to get rid of uh, that diacetyl that is formed. Okay. Sometimes people will say, well, we'll pitch another dry strain or pitch some more slurry, different things like that. I'm not wild about it. I think you want I think you want something that's active and fermenting. So you know, maybe if you if you build a small starter if you're at home and then add that. That might be an option, but you want active yeast going in. If you're if you're on the pro side, potentially you can cut off, you know, ten percent volume of something, a half barrel. You know, you you do your math of actively fermenting beer into into that one, and that may help nudge you through that that diacetyl that diacetyl rest. So those are some of your options for taking care of diacetyl once. It is in your beer. Most often, though, when I 
find that I have a little bit of diacetyl in a beer and, and it'll primarily be with like these really light lagers that we're making, Mexican lager, uh, Hellas, different things like that. It just needs another day or two at a warmer temp, you know, don't sweat it. And, and I, I'm pushing, like, I'm not like, I, I want to start lagering that beer as soon as I can. Cause I need to turn tanks. Right. And especially with lagers, I mean, I'm already sitting on them long enough. I don't want to be really wasting time when I can be dropping temp and, and getting them into the lagering stage. So, you know, we, we test that, you know, I, 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 I hit terminal and then I'm like, dude, let, let's get that diastole test. Let, let, let's see where it's at. So because I, I need to be turning those tanks. So that's typically how it, it shows up for me. Um, and yeah, that, that's how I deal with it in the brew house. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you feel as if you got any value out of the video, please like and subscribe. There are also other videos that you can watch. They're gonna maybe be over here or over here. Appreciate you watching.